Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. And I just wanted to come out and make a video and say hello. And just to talk with friends, family, loved ones, those who are listening to the sound of my voice. You know, in the midst of the mass hysteria that is going on. I want to just ask the question. Number one, where is our faith? Does our faith lie within the media, with the government, with law enforcement, with all of the things that are going on, the deception? Or is it in the hands of Jesus Christ? Is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? So I want you to sit back and think about that just for a bit. Have you stockpiled, you know, 500 rolls of toilet paper and six years of food? and Or have you been reaching out to those around you and sharing the love, the good news of Jesus Christ and His message about His soon return. You know, in these days, deception runs so deep that it is hard to even know what is real, what's coming over the TV, what's coming out of the mouths of our officials. Is there a, a deeper, sinister agenda going on? Because, again, I've said this before, when you look at the numbers, things don't add up. There is no crisis going on, and one could argue it's because of the measures that are being taken. Okay, that's fine. But I really would ask you to do research and dig deep. Dig deep into the numbers. And you'll find that the regular flu, the regular events that happen every day, take astronomically more lives than this is taken. And even at some levels, it's even more contagious. And yet, we have latched onto this, and we are running amok. We are literally running amok, and we are freaking out. Why is that? Is it because we are living in the last days and the enemy is trying to deceive everybody to maybe even, oh, I don't know, get them accustomed to these types of activities? It's hard to say, but sure looks that way. You know, one of the biggest deceptions is believing that we cannot be deceived. I want you to ponder that. Just think about that. It is so crucial that we are grounded in the one and only absolute truth. And that is the Holy Scripture, the Holy Bible, the Word of God, or the, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, if you will. Again, one of the biggest deceptions is believing that we cannot be deceived. I know for a fact that many who call themselves Christ followers are, dece are deceived. I know it's kind of hard to hear because it's even hard to say because it's a, it's a bummer. It is a bummer. But yet we allow the world to control us like a puppet master. They're pulling all the strings. And we as Christ followers just follow right along. And we're not supposed to. We are just supposed to live above and separate ourselves. From the things of this world. You know, it is easier to lie to someone than to convince that someone that they have been lied to. And everybody within the sound of my voice has been lied to. It's what you are going to do with that lie. Are you going to embrace a lie or are you going to embrace the truth? Are you going to follow the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or are you going to follow the precepts of this world? And the reason why I even 
in making this video, why I even bring these things up, is because the world is in a panic. The world is in turmoil. And granted, it's not really that bad yet. But there will be there will come a day where it will become very bad. You know, First Thessalonians tells us about the catching away, about those who are sealed in Christ, those who are true believers, those who love and follow Jesus Christ and, and want Him so desperately. They have surrendered their lives to Him completely and fully. There's a day coming, again, called the catching away. Modern Christians call it the rapture. And that's just based off the root word rapturo from Latin when the scriptures were translated from Greek and are making the Latin. And so we get the term rapture from that. It's where it comes from. I don't want to hear arguments. Oh, rapture's not in the Bible. It actually is. The catching away is the rapture. With that being said, soon thereafter, the catching away or the rapture, there can be an event called the tribulation or the great tribulation, and that is going to be the worst time throughout human history. So we begin to ask ourselves, are we going to believe this? Are we going to war against it? As a Christ follower, Scripture tells us these things, that these events are going to take place. So as a Christ follower, as a, as a believer in Jesus Christ and a believer of the gospel of Jesus Christ, these things should be deep set into our hearts in what we believe. But yet, there are many who call themselves Christ followers who do not believe this. They do, they do not believe in the words that they say they follow. I ask in these trying times that you begin to study. I'm convinced that our time is extremely short before these events will take place. You know, the handwriting is in the wall. The events and places and things have taken place around the world that point to Christ's soon return. It is clear. It is evident. It is scriptural. And those who are not sealed in Christ, those who do not know of His gospel, please, I challenge you to study because everything going on right now around us has been already foretold throughout Scripture. That in these last days, things just like this will happen. And again, many will be deceived. Deceived into believing a lie. Deceived into believing in the enemy who, when he comes... He's going to come in as an angel of light, but he is obviously of darkness. If you do not know the love and saving grace of Jesus Christ, I invite you and challenge you today. First off, if, you didn't, if you're on the fence about these things, study Scripture and know that the Word of God has been challenged since the time it was wrote because the reason why it's always being challenged is because the enemy does not want you to know the truth. He does not want you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, give your life to Christ, to trust and believe in Jesus Christ. When that is the only thing, the only way to enter heaven. Scripture is clear about this. You either, you either believe Scripture or you don't. Scripture tells us in very clear terms it is not by our own strength that we are saved or in other words it is not by our own strength our own will or our own good deeds that we enter heaven when we pass from this earth. It is only belief and trust in Jesus Christ that we are saved. It is only belief and trust in Jesus Christ that, that we enter heaven, that we enter His Father's kingdom. Jesus is the only way to enter heaven. You must understand this. Our good deeds, our good works do not save us. 
But once we are saved, those things should come from us. We should want to love and help others. We should want to serve because we have this, this love for Christ inside of us. Not that it saved us, but we should want to do these things because we have Christ living in us. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling us. And again, if you do not know Jesus Christ, if you do not know His love and His saving grace about His beautiful gospel, the gospel of grace, in which, and the only means which you are saved, I invite you to please trust and believe in Jesus. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Confess that He is the Messiah, that He is the Savior. He is the only Savior, the only Son of God. Believe that, trust that, and you will be saved. When we pass from this earth, we have one of two places in which we end up. Our final destination, if you will. Where would that be? Will it be in the most horrific, terrible, horrendous, torturous place in existence where the fire never ends, where the torture never ceases, in a place called hell? You see, hell was created for the enemy and all his followers. It was never created for man, but because of the fall, we separated ourselves from God. We separated ourselves from Christ's Father. In that fall that happened in the garden. And through that separation, we now have to have a Savior in simple terms. That's why Christ came. Because we cannot do it on our own. We cannot follow the law good enough. We are not good enough people. Matter of fact, it says in the Word of God that uh, our righteousness is as of dirty rags. Or in other words, our own righteousness isn't, isn't good enough to inherit or enter king, the kingdom of God. And that's why, again, Christ came. Please study these things. Please research these things. So when we pass from this earth, if we die from natural causes, if... Um, or if we get killed in a way, where, where will we end up? You know, I mentioned before, we either end up in the most horrific, terrible place in existence, hell, or we end up in the most beautiful, amazing, and wonderful place in existence that words cannot describe. A place that Christ prepared for us, for those who love and follow Him. A place which we call heaven. The kingdom of God, if you will. You can go there. You can go there. If you want, if you choose. That's just the truth of it. Because it's a choice that we have. We, we choose heaven or we choose hell. And you know, hell is no place to joke around. People joke that they're going to hell. You don't do that. Don't do that. Understand it. it. Once you're there, you can never leave. Once you're there, I bet within one second you wish you weren't there. Understand that. Choose Jesus Christ. He loves you. He made a way for you. He made a way where there's no way. He paid the price for your sins. Trust and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Trust and believe that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Repent. Repent. Surrender your life. Surrender your sins to Jesus Christ. Ask for Him to be your Savior. Ask him for Him to be your Lord. Ask for Him to be your, your, your God, your King. In these trying times, Jesus Christ is knocking on the door of your heart. Will you open that door for Him? Will you surrender your life to Him? I hope this message finds you well. And I pray in the name and by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have a great day. Amen. Bye-bye.